What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. Today, I'll be doing my early 2024 NASCAR schedule predictions. NASCAR has said many, many times, especially recently, they wanted to make some major changes to the 2024 schedule, and I've got some big changes that will be coming on my schedule as well. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. So, to kick off the season, I believe, on February the 3rd, the season is going to kick off for 2024 once again for the third year in a row at the Bushlight Clash at the Los Angeles Coliseum. For the third year in a row, the LA Coliseum is going to host it. I think the LA Coliseum has been able to provide some really, really good racing, especially for the first year, and they have pretty good attendance as well. And I think NASCAR wants to stay in the LA market, in the California market as well. So I think the LA Coliseum is going to host the Bushlight Clash. Then we're going to have a two-week break, and then after that, we are going to have the Daytona 500 kick off the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. Daytona 500 always been the first race really for the last 40 years in NASCAR history, and once again, it will continue to be the first race of the of the season, including in 2024. So for 2024, the Daytona 500 is going to kick off this season. Right after Daytona 500, we will have the West Coast Swing, and there will be changes to the 2024 NASCAR schedule. The second race of the year, which will be the first race of the West Coast Swing, will be at Auto Club Speedway. But instead of being on the two-mile course, it will be on the half-mile short track. Now, I do know that NASCAR, would, I think, eventually will move this track to the season finale. But I think for the second race of the year, and because it's been on the West Coast Swing really for a very, very long time, Auto Club is going to be the first race of the West Coast Swing, the second race of the year, and it will be the next race on the schedule. After Auto Club, we're going to actually stay in California, but instead of racing at Las Vegas, we're going to be racing at Sonoma Raceway. That's why right, Sonoma and my schedule will be switching away from being in the summer and we'll be moving into basically the early uh, March. The reason I'm having Sonoma move a little bit early in here is because, one, I think the weather is going to be a lot better and I think it's going to be better for the fans who go out to that race. Secondly, I think the racing will actually be a lot better. So I think Sonoma should be a spring. So I've said it for a long time that Sonoma should be in the spring and I've said it should be on the West Coast swing. And I think there should be a road course in the early portion of of the season. After Sonoma, we're going to be going to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Las Vegas are trying to provide a really good racing with the next-gen cars so far, and I think it will continue to do that heading into 2024. I am a big fan of Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and it will be the last race of the West Coast Swing before we start heading to the East. After Las Vegas, we'll be heading to the southeast portion of the country, and we'll be racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Atlanta will be a really good track when it comes to especially super speed racing. This, of course, will be the day race. This race will also be a 400-mile race like it is for 2023. I love this track. It's been one of my favorite tracks of all time, even though I don't think the racing's been the greatest over the years. Atlanta's an old-school track, though. They made it in a super speedway type of track now. Atlanta will be the next race on the schedule. Right after Atlanta Motor Speedway, we'll be hastily banding back to the south, basically the southwest of the country, technically, because we'll be racing at Circuit of the Americas in Texas. Coda put on a really good, awesome and fantastic race in 2022, and I think with the success of 2023, because I think the race in 2023 will be successful enough to continue racing there. I think Dakota is going to continue to host racing in 2024, and I think it will take place after Atlanta. Coda takes place after Atlanta. Right after Circuit Americas, we'll be heading back to the southeastern portion of the country, basically the eastern portion of the country near the southeast, because we're going to be racing at Bristol Dirt on Easter. I took a look at what Easter is going to be in 2024, and Easter is on March 31st. So Bristol Dirt is going to move up a little bit earlier in the season due to that. It will also be a night race once again on Easter, as NASCAR will continue hosting the race on Easter. The ratings are really, really good for 2022, and I think NASCAR is going to want to continue Continue that now rain could definitely be 100% a major factor that could play a factor into that I know National Fairgrounds is once again back in the conversations eventually host a race but Bristol Dirt will be after Coda right after Bristol Dirt we'll be heading to Richmond Virginia for the cup race at Richmond Raceway now this is going to be the only race at Richmond as I think Richmond is going to lose a day Personally, Richmond is a track that has not produced the greatest racing in the world over years. I do love the strategy part, don't get me wrong, but I don't think Richmond always produces the greatest racing. And then the other big reason why I think Richmond is going to lose a day is because of the fact of the attendance. Attendance has been a big issue at Richmond, so I think they're going to lose a day in 2024. I think they lose their date to another racetrack that we'll talk about in the foreseeable future. 
Right after Richard, we're going to be staying in Virginia, and we're going to be racing at Martinsville Speedway. Marzo will host two races in 2024, and it will once again do that. While the racing in 2022 was not the best, I think that this track will get better, and I think NASCAR will fix the package by, I think, giving the carts and drivers more horsepower and more of the tire fall off being a big thing as well. Marzo is still one of my favorite tracks on the circuit, and a track, in my opinion, that deserves to have two dates. It will once again be a day race. Right after Marza, we'll be heading to Alabama for the cup race at Talladega. Talladega will also be another track that so will host two races in the season. Talladega Super Speedway, a track that I always love going to, one of my favorite tracks of the season, that I think will continue to be able to provide some really awesome and great racing here and great, fantastic Super Speedway racing. That race will take place right after Marza and will probably be able to have some great attendance as well since it did in 2022. Right after Talladega, we'll be heading up to the northeastern portion of the schedule, and we'll be racing at Dover, Delaware for the only cup race of the season at Dover Speedway. Dover is a, fan, is a track that actually had a pretty good race in 2022, and in 2022 had one of its largest crowds in attendance. And for people that have been there, they have said that the experience is a lot better in person than watching on TV. And I think that's a big reason why a lot of people went out to Dover this year is because of that reason alone. So Dover is going to continue host racing heading into 2024. Right after Dover, we're going to have a new track and a new addition on the schedule. I think Kansas Speedway is actually going to lose a date in 2023 and 24, and I think it's going to get replaced by the Milwaukee Mile. The Milwaukee Mile has never hosted an Asker Cup Series race. They actually are returning to the Craftsman Truck Series schedule in 2023, and I think that Wisconsin 100% deserves a date since they're not going to be returning to Road America in 2023 and probably not in 2024 for the Cup side of things. I think they should get some compensation so they can race in the Midwest, and I think they will go to the Milwaukee Mile after Dover. Right after the Milwaukee Mile, we'll be heading down to South Carolina for the, for the throwback race at Darlington. They're like the Rebel 400 race. This has been one of my favorite traditional races of the year. The throwback race is always a race that I really, really enjoy. You always get throwback commentators. You name it. You always get amazing racing. And we'll kind of be in that general area for a short period of time. Darlington will be back to host the throwback race once again. Right after Darlington, we're going to have like a North Carolina sweep. And to kick that off, we are going to have a new all-star race track. Now, don't worry about North Wilkes or North Wilkes is going to stay on the schedule. But we're going to be going to another North Carolina track. We're going to go to Rockingham Speedway for the All-Star Race. Rockingham is currently at the moment, as we speak, working on renovations for the track. They've got some big plans around Rockingham currently as we speak. And I think that Rockingham is going to host a NASCAR Cup Series Day, at least for the All-Star Race. I think people will show up. And I've got a theory that maybe they'll do like a North Carolina package for 2024. But I think that Rockingham will come back to the schedule in 2024. And we'll host the All-Star Race. Right after Rockingham, we'll be in North Charlotte, North Carolina for the Coca-Cola 600 for the traditional Memorial Day weekend. Coke 600 is a traditional race in 2022. We had the best Coke 600 we've ever had in attendance. It was amazing as well. I think they nearly had a sold-out crowd there. So I think Google will continue to host racing in 2024. And the Coke 600 will continue to be on its traditional weekend. Right after Coco 600, we've got a little bit of moving around that's going to happen because North Wilkesboro will not be the All-Star Race in 2024, but instead, we will have North Wilkesboro as the points paying race after the Coca-Cola 600. That's right, North Wilkesboro is going to get its first points paying race since 1996 in 2024. I think with how much money North Wilkesboro has been working on, how much money that they are going to be getting heading into 2023, how much tickets are going to be, they've already sold out, and all the amenities and venues and renovations and all the money that they're getting, I think North Wilkesboro is going to become a points paying race and it will end the North Carolina stretch of races. Right after the North Wilkesboro weekend, we'll be heading out to the Gateway to the West and we'll be racing at Worldwide Technology Raceway. One of my personal favorite tracks on the circuit because, one, it is my hometown track. But second thing, I think Worldwide Technology Raceway can provide a better show with a better horsepower package. So I think that NASCAR is going to give the teams and drivers a better horsepower package that they could use as well. I love this track. This track I've been to multiple times in my lifetime, and I think this track deserves to continue to be on the schedule long term. And I think it will continue to be on the schedule in 2024. Right after Worldwide Technology Raceway, we're going to have a one-week break, and then we'll be racing at Nashville Super Speedway. 
Now, one thing to note is it will be the last year on National Super Speedway's contract as they have a four-year deal currently at the moment. Now, I see them getting a potential extension, but of course, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of talk and conversation around the National Fairgrounds. So it's very possible this could be the last race at National, at least for a couple of years where they do transition to going back to National Super Speedway. But I think National Super Speedway is going to continue hosting races at least through 2024 as it is under the contract. Right after the Cup race at National Super Speedway, we'll be staying in the Midwest region of the country, and we'll be racing once again at the Chicago Street Course. Now, this is just a prediction. They could basically, they have a three-year deal currently, but there is the election coming out in, Cal in, in Chicago, and po politics when it comes to street racing is very, very important to watch. Though, I do think the election may end up going Lori Lightfoot's way. A lot of people don't like Lori Lightfoot, and that could play a factor. If Chicago Street Courts gets kicked off the schedule, I would see Chicago maybe getting their day uh, back on the schedule. But I think in 2024, the Chicago Street Courts are going to play by the rules and stay on the schedule. Right after the Chicago Street Courts, we'll be racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway once again. But this one, unlike the spring race, will be a night race. In 2023, this event is becoming a night race, and I think the race being a night race definitely makes 100% a lot more sense. And I think it will be able to provide some really, really good racing that the track really, really needs. And I think it will ride a better crowd as well, especially for the weather. Same thing for Nationals, while well, I did not mention. That race is also going to be a night race in 2023. Both those will be in 2024, and Atlanta will continue hosting two races in 2024. Right after Atlanta Motor Speedway, we'll be going up to the East Coast to be racing in New England at New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the only time of the season. New Hampshire has become a very underrated track, in my opinion, and deserves to be on the schedule pretty much every single year. And it will continue hosting races in 2024, and it will be on the schedule once again. So after Atlanta, I've got New Hampshire hosting the next race. Right after New Hampshire, we'll be staying in the East Coast region of the country, and we'll be racing at Pocono Speedway for the only time of the season. Pocono Raceway, a track that's been hit or miss for me throughout time, but you got to stay in that region. And they had a they had a sold out crowd and their largest crowd at the track since I think 2012 or 2013, which is amazing to see. And they had a sold out crowd in 2022. I don't see that hap changing in two years' time. I think 2023 they're going to continue to have really really strong crowds, and I think they 100% will continue hosting races in 2024, and they will have a Cup race that year. Right after Pocono Raceway, I already mentioned this about Richmond. But I think in 2024, Richmond is only going to have one date. NASCAR has probably said that they want to do some international racing as early as 2024. I think they're going to do that. And I think NASCAR is going to return to a familiar track that used to be in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I'm talking about Circuit Jill's Villa New. Circuit Jill's Villa New is a track that I think absolutely deserves an opportunity to come back to the schedule. The track provided great racing for the Xfinity Series, had many memorable moments, and I still watch those races this day, and they are still very enjoyable. Ten years later, even five years from, even 15 years later, the races are still enjoyable to this day. From the first year in 2007 up to 2012, never provided a bad race. And I don't think this track is going to do that. So I think it has a good chance of getting added, and I think people want it, so I think now Asker will listen. I think they'll be racing in Canada in 2024 at Circuit Jill's Villeneuve. Right after Circuit Jill's Villeneuve in Montreal, we'll be going back down to Michigan Speedway and we'll be in the north portion of the country. But we'll be racing in Michigan Speedway. This track, great attendance in 2022 and a great race as well. The best race, I think, since the Michigan repave. And it will continue to be around for many, many years as well as you got to kind of stay in that area and get that kind of audience as well. So Michigan is going to stay on the schedule once again. And I think they will continue hosting races in the year 2024 and we'll go ahead and be hosting races again in 2024. Right after Michigan Speedway, we'll be racing at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But instead of racing on the Indy Road Course configuration of the track, I think that they are going to, for the first time since 2020, they are going to be hosting a race on the regular Brickyard configuration of the racetrack. Many people have been wanting the Brickyard track to return to the NASCAR Cup Series schedule, and I think that they are going to do that in 2024. I think a lot of us want to see how the next-gen car can race on this track. Some people don't think it will race good. Others, like myself, think we should try it out to see if it races good or not. And if it doesn't, maybe then we can go back to the road course configuration. But I think it makes sense to try it out, and I think that they will be having the Brickyard back in 2024. I think the Brickyard officially makes its glorious return in 2024. Right after the Brickyard 400 race for the Indy at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we'll be heading to the East Coast and we'll be racing at Watkins Glen. 
Wog is going to a fan favorite track for many people, and for many people, the best road course race generally every single year. This track is always fight a great racing and can drag a lot of different drivers and different forms of racing to come out and race. So I think Watkins Glen comes back on the schedule once again. It's been on the schedule for a very, very long time, really since the beginning of days. It raced a few times the first time in 1957. Then they had a little bit of break, and then they came back in the 80s and have not gone off the schedule since. I think Watkins Glen continues to be having racing in 2024. And then the final race of the regular season for 2024 will take place at Daytona International Speedway. NASCAR loves at Daytona. It's always a cutoff race. It's always a race that's very, very entertaining. Sometimes, again, you have chaos that really is out of NASCAR's control that really can come out of nowhere. I don't see them having getting out of control this time around, though, and I think Daytona will once again be the regular season finale. So now... We're going to get into the round of 16 because I think NASCAR is going to continue having the rounds system the way they do. And there are, will be some changes throughout this, but not a ton of changes. Let's begin with the round of 16. First race of the round of 16 is going to be the Southern 500. Southern 500 has been the kickoff race for the playoffs, I think, since 2019, and since 2020. For the last three years, it has hosted the playoff opener and it will continue to do that. It's a race that against man versus a machine. It's a race to tell time. It's a race to basically get against each other, and it will continue hosting racing again in 2024. It's a track that provides great racing. Mexican put on a good show in 2022, and it will continue to be the opening race of the round of 16. After the Southern 500, we'll be going to Kansas Speedway for the only time of the season. Kansas Speedway, a track that has been, had good racing, but I think the NASCAR will basically be cutting one of their races. Their attendance has been hit or miss, and I think if you give them only one race, I think more people are going to show up than not show up. Look at a lot of other tracks that have single-date races. They tend to do better attendance. Many tracks have basically provided that and have been able to do that. I think Kansas is going to be no exception. It will be one race in there, and it will be the second race of the round of 16. After Kansas, the cutoff race will be at Bristol Motor Speedway. Bristol Motor Speedway, fantastic track. Will always has always been a special place in my heart. I remember the race in 2021. I remember the races from old, like 2018, some of those other races as well. And it will continue to be in the cutoff race. It's a favor of mine and a favor of many, many fans in NASCAR as well. It will continue to be in the cutoff race of the round of 16. Now we're going to get into the round of 12 now. So first race in the round of 12 will take place at Texas Motor Speedway. Texas, probably everyone's least favorite racetrack, justifiably so. The race this year was not very good, in my opinion. But Texas has basically a market out there, and you got to stay in that market, especially with the management over there. You got to stay in that market. So Texas will continue hosting races in 2024, and we'll have another race in 2024. After that, we're going to be heading back to Talladega Super Speedway for the second race of the round of 12 and the middle race of the playoffs. Talladega, great track. Always, like I said, rides great racing. And you got to stay at Talladega and keep it in the playoffs. It keeps the intensity, keeps the drama, and will be attractive. will be on the schedule once again in 2024 for the playoffs. And then the final race of the round of 12 will be at the Charlotte Roval. Charlotte Roval, will, I think, will be the last year for the Charlotte Roval. TV ratings have been generally going way down over the last few years. It wouldn't shock or surprise me eventually they do go back to the regular Charlotte configuration, a mile and a half configuration. But I do think that the round of 12 cutoff race is going to be taking place at the Charlotte Roval. And that will be once again, but it'll be the final year of the, the cutoff. It'll be the final year for the round of 12 having the Charlotte Roval. And now we get into the round of eight. The first race of the round of eight is going to be a Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Now, personally, I think Las Vegas only deserves one day. Unfortunately, Las Vegas, I believe, has a contract for either 2029 or 2030. So they have to host races, two races a year, as of now, through 2030, 2031. So they're going to have to host two dates. Now, good news is, is that Las Vegas is attractive advice, really, really good racing at the moment, like I mentioned earlier. So I think that it will still be able to provide that great race into everybody once, and I think it will be able to continue hosting good racing. After Las Vegas, the middle race at a round of eight is going to take place at Phoenix Raceway. Phoenix is getting moved away from the championship race in 2024 and gets moved to the middle of the round of eight. Phoenix is not as early to be a championship race. I know that it does bring some really good attendance and there's a lot of buzz around the championship weekend, but I don't think Phoenix provides a good race. And I think if you're going to have the championship race, you got to provide a really exciting race. Atlanta did that for years. And at Homestead did that for many, many years. I don't think that Phoenix is attracting your vibe 
that re really amazing racing that you're going to need. I know that people really support the event, and it's understandable, but I don't think Phoenix is a racetrack that can provide the greatest racing in the world. So to me, I think Phoenix loses a championship race, but still remains in the playoffs. And then the final race in the cutoff race for the round of eight takes place at Martinsville. Marzel's a grandtastic cutoff race. We saw in 2022 the Hail Melon happen, and I think it will continue to be that race that really brings a lot of excitement and a lot of entailment and a lot of great things for the event. So I think Marzel will continue to be the cutoff race of the round of eight. Great track, great facility, and it will be the cutoff race of the round of eight. In my opinion, it will be the cutoff race of the round of eight. And then finally, the championship race. There's one race I did not mention. I think a former track called Homestead Miami Speedway that has hosted races in NASCAR for a long time lost the championship race in 2019. But in 2024, I think Homestead finally gets it back. Most people want Homestead to become the season finale once again. I know that Kyle Larson dominated in 2022, and for some people, it wasn't very fun to watch. But I think it makes a lot more sense for this track to once again be the season finale. I think it makes a lot more sense, and I think the Homestead 100% needs to be the season finale in 2024. Again, I think it will also give Homestead a lot of the rebirth it needs. It will give a lot of a fair around the track, and I think that they will put a lot more seriousness in. They've got money coming into the track, so why not make it a season finale and make it a festivity? I think Homestead becomes the championship race in 2024. So those are my way-too-early 2024 NASCAR Cup Series schedule predictions. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, throw notifications on, be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Link description below over that, and comment your thoughts on today's video. What are your thoughts about my 2024 NASCAR schedule predictions? Do you think that my predictions are really good or not? Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're going to be having the F1 review for the race at Brazil. We'll have the Brazilian GP video out. It's also my dad's birthday tomorrow, so wish my dad an early happy birthday. And I've got a lot of other content coming as well. I actually think I'll have the first team preview on the channel coming up here really soon that I think you're going to be enjoying on Monday. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.